What's going on, everybody? This is Rawstar of the Misfit Effects. And of course, I'm joined with my beautiful co-host who uh, is gracing us with her presence today and who's going to introduce our guest, uh, Miss Sarah Lace. <laughs> so, hello, everybody. I am actually heading out to Miami tomorrow, but but today I am super, super happy to be here. And I am excited to actually introduce the gorgeous MILF, Pristine Edge. So mm -hmm. I have read a little bit about her, but I would like her to introduce herself to you guys. Y'all ready for that? <laughs> hey, I'm Pristine Edge. I've um, been in the industry since 2014, filming and doing all the adult work and I made my way up to no status and I'm happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> so I did notice that you actually started off as a dancer. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? What drew you to dancing? Okay, well, <clears throat> I, I, you know, I was in the car with a girlfriend of mine one day and I'm like, you know, I'm thinking about being a dancer. And she's like, me too, but we've been best friends since seventh grade. And we we're both very, very um, Christian girls. So for me to come out and say that and for her to be like, yeah, me too, was so crazy. Well, she had more balls than I did because she went out the very next day, got a job. And <laughs> oh she God. was there for three months before I like summoned up the courage to do it myself. Mm -hmm. But it was nice that I waited for three months because I kind of got to talk to her about it and get the feel for things. Um, she's a very, very bold, courageous girl, and I love her so much. Um, but she kind of helped me get my foot in the door and taught me the ways and um, even went up on stage with me for the, my first stage set and it was really cool. So that's kind of how that happened. <laughs> are you still dancing now or are you just uh, doing the the corn? The, oh, uh, <laughs> the corn. <laughs> um, I do feature dancing, so I travel around to clubs that request me just for a, a day or two. You have that's any... amazing. I would love to see you feature dance at one point. Aww. You, have, you, have, you have any coming up? I do. Um there's one November 13th to 16th in Sacramento. And then there's Ooh. another one December. I forget the date. It's somewhere in December and it's here in Vegas. Both well, this one is Sapphire. When you got time. That's that's three months yeah. away. They can they'll they'll hear this in October and then they'll look on your page and say, Oh my God, I got an October. I can I can go gamble. I can use the money that I'm gambling with to throw away prestige, uh, oh. pristine edge on stage. And, and like, it'll make her smile and it's, it'll make me smile because I'm giving her my money to make her smile. And, you know, <laughs> and, and everybody goes home happy because they they get to dance and you get money and yeah, and they get to yeah. gamble. It's you know, so true. I, I love that because also like you can do more nudity in like Vegas compared to like in other places. So they kind of get to see you in all your glory and they also get to actually meet you because there's, you know, like unless you're going to conventions too, there's really no, no other place for them to meet you. That's so they get true. to see yeah. your, your personality, how beautiful and how amazing you are in person. Because you know that our, our photos and our videos don't necessarily do us justice. That's so I, I feel like that they're definitely going to be very excited to see you, to see you on stage performing and then getting to actually talk to you a little bit. I think it's awesome. Yeah. You know, bouncing off of something that he just said, um, whenever people are throwing money on stage and you know what I've noticed is whenever there's one person it just takes one person who's throwing mm -hmm. a lot there was one guy who was throwing hundreds up before and him being there it it was like a domino effect he's putting on a big show and you know he's feeling big everybody's looking at him he's kind of still on the show but i don't care <laughs> how about it buddy <laughs> um then it's a domino effect everybody else starts to kind of make it big too it's like a big production it gets pretty fun <laughs> i love that because i do feel like not everyone, but like people, they tend to get competitive and see if they can kind of out tip each other. And that's kind of really awesome because you like, first of all, like, yeah, we, we do need to get paid from all the all our traveling and everything. Like there's so many expenses, but it just feels nice to have them give us that attention. Yeah. And to have multiple people be like, girl, take all my money. You deserve it. <laughs> I like to roll around in it whenever it's coming oh, down. Me too. <laughs> and then I, I do the little with the yeah. money and just like do a little roll. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's so hot. 
love that. The, you know, we should have coordinated our outfits because I think that we matched today. Right? <laughs> we should have, we should have, like, what are you wearing? What are you wearing? <laughs> the, I was like, so I, I rarely go to strip clubs, but I, like, I was coming to someone before. I love the art that goes into what um, y'all do when y'all dance. Because I feel that, like, it takes a lot of work, one, to either, even, like, one, even go on stage, because you never, you never know if people are going to like your dancing, and then you worry, always worry about, you know, falling. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care about your dancing, to be honest with you, they don't care. I mean, I don't know if it's just, I don't know if it's just me, because I'm a weirdo like that. Because, like, I prefer the art over everything else, and I give money for the art. Because mm -hmm. if, you're, if, you're, if you're up there and you're and you just get up there and just do like a twerk, I'm like, okay. So you me. like to see girls flipping around the pole and yeah, across I, the I, I, yeah. yes, I, I enjoy the art of it because mm -hmm. I feel that almost anybody can, you know, just do a regular, a regular dance, but mm -hmm. if you. But you show uh, told me that like, hey, I can I, I like what I do a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to go roll around this pool, on this pool, on this pole for a second and just just do a little do a little spin. I like that, and I would, yeah. I would give money to that. You know, yeah, I'm not, I like I'm not... that. I like that you appreciate that aspect because a lot of guys don't appreciate that. Yeah. I spend my time kind of on the stage because that's when money's at, but also where all. The people are so you can kind of get a little personal with each one um, mm -hmm. but in between I like to climb up on the pole a little bit and then come back down <laughs> See? I get it I feel like I focus a little too much on the pole and I kind of in a sense I forget that everyone's there and I just be like a little pole princess you know and then I'm like oh shit let me let me go down there and actually like dance in front of them and stuff like that and I feel like there, there does have to be a bit of a balance, you know, like yeah. be a little flashy and like do those pull tricks or not even huge pull tricks, you know, but like just do a little bit to kind of catch their attention. You know, once they're actually there, you kind of like come hither a little bit. You like crawl to them and be like, hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just <laughs> noticed that that's kind of what catches my attention with people, you know, when I'm there attending and like watching. Yeah, I think I need, um, I think I need to explain to you what I mean because I mean like, I mean as actual dancing. So if you're on the on the floor and you like you know you do the the whole leg wrap thing, that's cool. But I mean like if you're just up there and you're doing the actual standing dancing, whatever. Because some people I've seen people just get up there, hold the pole in their hand, twerk, and then look around for money, and it's like. I can go to a club that, and see someone work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, That's what I mean. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I also feel like the girls, the ladies who are down on the floor, when you're smiling and interacting, more people, mm -hmm. you're more approachable. People are more likely to come up to your stage and, and say hi. And then it's easy just to kind of be like, hey, why don't you find me afterwards? Let's go back for a VIP or something. That's when you can slide that in there. So when you're down on the floor, that's where all the money is at. That's when you're, mm -hmm. you know. That is very, very true. Because I feel like when I do it, I kind of like intimidate them a little bit because I'd be wearing like the big ass heels and stuff. And I do like some crazy pull tricks. And then I'm like, you know what? You didn't have to do all that. Like, I want to see you now. <laughs> I want to see this. I want to see this performance you've got going on. Okay. I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you I'll send you a video from uh, what we did for Urban X. That yeah, was I want to see fun. But I was, I'll be honest, I was nervous. Oh, <laughs> see, I don't know. Like, I don't know just because like I'm too I've gotten too respectful in this in industry mm -hmm. that I've been like I've always been so like I can't ask them to do this. And then even when I'm getting um I take somebody to private, I put my hands like way across so it doesn't look like I'm doing something I'm not supposed to. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't even want to touch, I barely want to touch them. <laughs> I feel, well, you have to enjoy your time too. No, no. You if, I mean, but usually a girl will lead your hands. Let's take your hands and put them where they're allowed to go. You know, exactly. I mean, because I've I've been in a VIP where you're not allowed to touch them. Period, which is okay. Um, but it's like also like because I've been in this industry forever, for, forever how long, whatever. Like, and I'm always like, like for example, I've taken her picture, 
And like, even if like her, like her hair is in, in her front of her eye right now, if I want her to move that and she's not getting it, I'm like, can I touch your, like, I'm like, can I touch your person? And I'm like all nervous to even do it, like, you know, to just to go just a little bit. And like, I think that mentality has followed me into that world also saying, I don't, I don't want to touch you, but A shy guy is so cute. Oh my God, stop. I love it. <laughs> I love shy men. It makes me like embarrass them, but I just love the same thing. You know, I'm going to go a little off topic, but I want to come back to this. I did a scene with Mandingo and he was, out of any man I've ever worked with, he was the most shy. And I'm telling you what, it made me so, it turned me on to another level. Like that scene turned out really good. It was like for a dog part or something, but that scene was amazing. I think it's because you were so shy. So stop it because you're making me all excited. Because <laughs> I feel like in a sense, it makes you think like, oh, let me see what it'll take for him to break character or for him to like finally break and just be like, yeah. Probably. Yeah. But well, you know, they want it. They just don't want to say it. <laughs> no, exactly. no, no, that's what they like. Okay. This is her included. Because I do photography and videography, they literally be on like while I'm recording or taking pictures, spend the entire time trying to break me. And I'm like, I, and like sometimes they don't do it. And when she finally did it, like it made her day. Did you? <laughs> you? Huh? It's I'm fucking like, hilarious when I do it. Like, what do you mean by break him? What does that mean? What does that I mean, mean? Like because because like every character cause because you know like when they're when they're focused on photography, like they they want to be very professional and like not make any you know like they, they mm. try not to make any like lewd comments or anything like that. And so he's just like hyping us up like oh yeah get it you know like that looks awesome and this this and that. And then we do something either dirty or really funny that just has them just bust out laughing and just like, but no, uh, uh, hard on. Yeah, yeah and they, fun. no, they, like, they, 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 they like try, it. they try to, like, for example, like it was one time I was taking pictures of somebody, and this entire time I'm I'm doing like what I do for pictures, but I wasn't laughing at what they were saying, and then all of a sudden, um, this performer just started. using her vagina lips as like a ventriloquist dummy like you know just just talking with her talking with those lips like using her i'm like and that broke me that made me laugh and i'm like that's hilarious and no and normally like since i'm videography or photography i know how to control myself and not get hard whatever and it's only happened twice in like, all the years i've doing it and Yeah, when they did that, they they had a field day. Like I'm like, I'm sorry, I apologize, and it took me forever to apologize. I'm like, my bad. <laughs> they didn't care. I'm sure <laughs> they, they didn't the care. But because we've also known each other for about five years, so it's not anything like, oh, this guy's weird or whatever. It's always like, it's actually fun when we go on set and do photos and stuff together. And I'm just like, Haha, let me. So, so Miss Edge, so, um, what do you do for fun? What, what makes Edge, you know, have fun? Oh, I'm such a grandmother. <laughs> I'm such a grandmother in like my personal life. I quilt. I made this quilt, which I've actually oh, shown before. That's nice. Um, I was going to ask that because I did see it on the notes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Quilting is like my favorite pastime. Um, I've sold one quilt, um, but I typically don't sell them. I make them and I give them to family members. Somebody, I started a quilt and I promised my um, social media following that I would post it for sale and somebody swooped in and bought it before I even posted it. So um, I never did show that one off, but I've, I've made several quilts and I love it. I have, I, I'm not going to take you upstairs, but I have a massive, um, 13 foot sewing machine up there that oh, does wow. like the detail Ooh. the detail yeah that is awesome yeah because I was wondering if you do the um what are they called the patchwork ones the ones mm -hmm. that are like the squares and then you just like just kind of combine them make it a big quilt because oh, yes. I've seen somewhere sorry. they kind of like over the over the years they'll add things that like make it more of an heirloom I was wondering if you've done one of those yet. 
Yeah, I have one on my bed. That one what took the longest. Ooh. It's um, over a thousand pieces on that one. Um, yeah, it's a traditional. It's called a log cabin quilt. I'm gonna bore all of you guys. See, I told you I'm such a grandma. Hey, no, uh, this, this, <laughs> is, this is this is so interesting to me, and I just yeah. sit back. Yeah, get me started like, to talk about quilting, and I will never shut up. That's the problem. <laughs> no, no. Here's the here's the deal. That's the point. This one thing I love about what we like the podcast that we do. We like to under, like we want we want to learn about you. This is about you. So mm -hmm. quilting is what you love. So this is interesting to me to hear about your love for quilting. So I'm on, I'm in awe right now. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> well, thank you. That is my I guess heirloom one. My uncle is trying to ask me for it. He wants that one, and I think I might give it to him because my dogs keep going like they put their paw on my bed they're not allowed on the bed but they'll kind of go up on the bed and there's a few rips on the side where it was Ooh, um, yeah. and so he's been begging me for that one for his cabin that he has and I'm like you know what maybe I'll just give that one to him but that's my favorite one that's the one I put like, my heart and soul into but I've made several I mean mm -hmm. yeah. I'm give me quilting. I guess I started sewing when I was 12 and then um I didn't start quilting until 2000 maybe 10 is when I, started. Okay. I made a blanket. So I didn't know how to quilt. I started making blankets first where I would just sew pieces of fabric together and mm -hmm. then kind of ease my way into making a quilt. The very first quilt I ever made would have been like patchwork quilts would have been 2016. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. From there. So it, it, it takes a bit of a build up to first, like get the skills and second to build that confidence to finally create what you have envisioned, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's true. Pretty, yeah but I didn't love it in the beginning I didn't love it in the beginning it took me a few years before I was like I actually it was during the pandemic that I'm like I mm -hmm. love this and that's sort of where I just kind of went crazy with that oh yeah, yeah. So plus I'm looking, at, a little more time. I'm looking at the <laughs> one behind her and I'm just seeing like all the designs and all the stuff right there and it's I'm actually just, cute on the other side and it's I'm like on the other side. And in my brain it's Ooh. like like as how much work went into that and how much I would fail even if I tried to do that Mm -hmm. that's a, that is a real, a real wonderful talent. Yeah, thank you, Rose. thank you. Like mm -hmm. that is that is such a cute quilt. So I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, I mean, like I mean, I'm enjoying your work. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> I'm I'm fanboy fanboying over your quilting right now. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I've made I've made several. I've made for, one for a teacher before, and I've made some for family members and. Um, I made one for my hairstylist, but I ended up keeping it because I loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I get that. You can make them another one, one make them another one one day. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. I made this for you. And I was like, oh. and uh, then you'll come back and get your hair done. And like, it'd be like somewhere in their salon or place, whatever. You'd be like, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like since winter is coming, you know, we're about yeah. to get to the cold months. So I feel like it's it's the time for quilts, you know? It's the time yeah. to start working on them a little more. <laughs> I would say yeah. that. Have you tried knitting also, or is it just quilting? Like I cannot. Quilting? I can't for the life of me. I tried whenever I was way younger. I tried I tried mm -hmm. knitting and crocheting, and I just can't do it. I, I get bored that. of it really quickly. I get bored of it, and it's just not for me. <laughs> I also I don't like that. the feeling of yarn. Do you guys have one of those? Like a... I don't like the feeling of yarn. I think it's it's gross to me. I, I feel like it depends on the yarn itself. Because, like, uh, the way that I would, like, buy my yarn was actually go and, like, feel them all out. Like, you know how they have them all in the shelves? And I just go, like, okay, okay, this one's, like, rough. Oh, this one's soft. All right, pull that one out. Are you, do you like it? Going. See, I'm one of those people that, like, I like to try things out and then I kind of like forget about that hobby and then try something else out. So I was yeah. like trying to start crocheting after I tried to start embroidering. So it's like nothing ever stuck with me, but I do. Oh, know well, I mean, that's the point. You know? yeah. yeah. Oh, embroidery. I haven't tried what that. You like. I haven't tried embroidering. That sounds like that's one that I'd like to get into. See, I haven't, I haven't, nice. I haven't sold since uh high school home ec. or or middle no. school it was high no. school or middle school and yes it was home ec. i took every <laughs> i took every one of those like it was home ec, then it was foods one two and three so That's yeah three. i was I failed foods class i failed it. <laughs> the way i missed I, a lot of school that month 
the, the way that I was is like I grew up already like I grew up cooking like I, I started cooking at a young age like I had to kind of help my family out so when high school offered those to us you know how like when you first go to like the first year of school they kind of give you a random schedule and you're just like oh I don't like this class I don't like this class and you go and try to change it so I they gave me they gave me home ec and I was just like Miss, I'm not, y'all not going to raise me to be a housewife. Like, I have it. all these AP classes and then, bam, you putting me in home ec. Like, give me something that actually, like, something that I actually want, you know. Did you they get such sent to something different th th that you wanted? Um, They ended up putting me in a criminal justice class. Okay. So it, it, <laughs> totally was, another, it was a college class still, you know. It was one of those APDC classes because I was like, come on, give me something that like where I actually need to use my brain because I've I've been cooking and cleaning since I could fucking walk, you know, like before, yeah. before I could even like reach the stove, I learned how to cook. We we got to yeah. pick our we got to pick our classes. Like we got to, like like the uh semester before, we got mm -hmm. to pick where we wanted to go to. Dang, my school didn't have that. They just kind of throw you in a yeah. class. And I like, chose right. I, I chose foods class because yeah. I like because I like to cook. And yeah, um I am the thing is this. Like I love to cook, but I don't like to cook for myself. Mm -hmm. And like yeah. the thing is when people are here, they much rather order uh food. And sometimes it's my fault too, because I'm too lazy to do it. But um and Sometimes the food don't match what we all enjoy, but mm -hmm. I love I love to cook anything outside of pasta because I hate noodles. Um, mm -hmm. Don't judge me. I hate noodles. Noodles are very disgusting to me. <laughs> yeah, oh. one one day I got you know, he he hates all of them. But one day oh I God. got drunk at his place. Mind you, it wasn't like crazy drunk, but it was just like a few drinks, you know. And I was like, damn, let me do some meal prep because we gonna have a busy weekend. And so I knew he didn't like pasta, but I was in the mood for pasta. So I went and made like a huge ass batch of like pasta, spaghetti sauce and stuff like that. And then I went on the side and was like, all right, let's make some, let's make some Mexican rice and some like picadillo de papas, basically like ground beef with like diced potatoes and stuff like that. So it's, it's a really good meal. But I was just like, well, let me make two two dishes while I'm at it because I know he's not gonna eat, he's not even gonna touch the pasta. Oh, that was thoughtful of you. <laughs> so, question: You like it says you craft here. So, you like do you make objects or is it just the knitting or the um uh, quilting? Um, it says, it says you craft. I don't know what that means. It could mean you okay. make yeah craft. What do you craft? Um, I'm not, I mean, quilting is it at this point. Okay, no, That's I'm the just... only thing, like you, you tried out different things and you decided you're going to, you know, that knitting wasn't for you. And, um, that's kind of how I was. And you don't have to, you can either go back to the hobby whenever you want. There's no rules. You can do it if you like it, go back and do it. If you don't like it, don't, you don't have to touch it again. And, um, exactly. quilting oh, is the only one I care for. It just, no, it just, it just says in the notes, like, you, yeah. like, you love, you love crafting, you, you love hiking and fishing and kayaking. kayaking. You know, yeah. and you can take uh, the girl out of Missouri, but you can't take the Missouri out of the girl. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say this: uh, Midwest represent. You know, yeah. I'm from the Midwest also. I don't live there anymore, oh, yeah. but I'm from Indiana originally. Okay, so, okay, same same geographics basically. Yeah, it's like, no, it's, yeah. it's it's still the Midwest. It's still the Midwest. It's, it's, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think it, yeah, yeah. Still the Midwest. I'm from the South, like deep South, <laughs> like Texas. And she's a Texan. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh. Mm -hmm. You don't so, have too much of that Texas twang going on. <laughs> no, not anymore. Oh, it worked out of you. So question. So what what do you what do you have uh coming up in general that we should look forward to? The future dances are the main thing. I think that there's a few other things that should be coming out. Gosh, there's so many. Like I never know when they put when they drop and when they don't. I don't know. So there's a couple that should be dropping and the feature dances, I think, are what I'm looking forward to the most. There's also okay. Exotica, which I'm on the fence about if I'm going to go or not. I need to make that decision probably by the end of this week. Um, I might go to the New Jersey. Jersey one? Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I, I might go to that one. Yeah. I'm actually trying to buy a property. Um,
necessary right now. So that's why I know by Sunday if mm-hmm. that will be done or not, if, if I need to go out there for that or if I can go to New, Jer- New Jersey. <laughs> that okay. makes sense. You got priorities. You got you to gotta take yeah. care of. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I have not been to an Exotica since it was in L.A. Yeah. Yeah, that's how long it's been. It's been since like 2012. <laughs> I forgot why we don't do it in LA anymore. But it's just no money. There's no money out here for it. <laughs> well, they have, well, they they have they Urban have X them. and they have X Biz. So maybe that's why. Well, no, no, no. Well, Urban Urban X is the like it's just like the regular award show, and we just I'm sorry, they just started uh, doing that little extra things here and there. Mm-hmm. And X Three just started in 2021, um, doing the little things, mm-hmm. but like. Years ago, yeah, yeah, but like before that, you we had all of them out here. You had uh Exotica, mm-hmm. you had uh Adult Con, and it was another one that they did out here. Um, that, there's Dom Con, no, I mean, like, I mean, of the big of the big conventions. <laughs> I know for a fact that I've been to uh the Exoticas out here and Adult Cons out here, and I know when I transitioned to Florida for those two years. Um, that's when they stopped doing it as much out here. Um, and that was like in 2016. Hmm. I'm trying to think. So do you do like interviews while you're there? What What is your... Oh, I mean, no, Um, I, I, to break down what I actually do, um, I help, I do a lot of stuff for the Urban X Awards. I help them with a lot of uh, like the check-in. I I'm a uh, sponsor for XRCO. I'm one of the sponsors, uh, like, give them money just because. And um, I do photography, videography, graphics, and um, for people, whatever. People have used my home to have sex in. Um, not just you, but a lot of people. Like, I <laughs> I haven't had sex in my in this in this new house, but three people, four people have already. That's not including <laughs> That's her, 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 uh, her, uh, uh, partner, and you then christened someone, the home, and then someone, <laughs> yeah, I someone, it. someone <laughs> tried to see, someone tried to see in my pool house already. So my nice. pool house, my pool house has been christened. My spare, one of my spare rooms has been christened, and I'm not even fully unpacked yet because I moved in here to the fifth of September. Oh my goodness. Mind you, mind you, the moment we literally finish unpacking, well, kind of yeah, finish they finished, moving the boxes. They had sex. I, I was <laughs> yeah, I was already there doing a strip tease video, being like, Oh yeah, who wants my sweaty panties and my my sturdy socks and blah blah blah? Like oh. day one. Day one, I was like, Yeah, that's right, Rockstar. I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna make this not just a whorehouse, a whore home. And that's what and that's what they did. Well, that's what they did to my old house too. They're like, "Oh, raw, raw lives alone. Let's just hop in each one of his rooms and just yeah. go around like crazy." And God oh forbid, goodness. God forbid, I have a pool now. I haven't got my privacy fence up yet, but I already know someone's gonna misuse my pool. So and we're gonna use this GoPro to do it. Oh, you have it all planned out. <laughs> that's great. He already knows, like. Like he was, um, he was literally looking at the place like while I was hanging out with him, and I was like, "Oh, this spot is perfect for this." And he was like, "Let me add a privacy fence first, like, but let me add a little extra privacy before we go and do anything." And I was like, "What about some naked sunbathing?" He's like, "If you want the neighbors to all see you in all your glory," and I was like, "Well, they we might have already, already have. Just don't know that <laughs> they did it." So I have a question. So I see on here, uh, I didn't get a chance to look this up. What all um, mainstream roles have you had? Because I see it says you did H- some HBO late night movies and mm-hmm. some cases in mainstream things. So yeah. what, should we, what, should we look, what should we be looking for from your work? I don't know. Yeah, yeah there's, there's there's four HBO movies out there. I don't think that HBO does the, the late night movies anymore. Um, let's see. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the names of them. There was the Vixens from Venus and um, High Heel Homicide, and there was 
Oh gosh, I don't even remember. Sleeping Beauties, and then there was one other one, and those were really fun. I actually did Vixens from Venus. That was a twenty-one hour day on set, and anything that could go wrong that day went wrong. So um, oh people were walking off set because it was a long day, and um, it was supposed to be soft core, and I did not know that it was supposed to be soft core. So I'm like neck deep in another girl. <laughs> So nobody stopped me. Nobody said, hey, this is supposed to be sophomore. But it did upset. There was three of us girls and it did upset one of the girls and she got really upset and stormed off. I don't know why she didn't say something during it or when we had a break or something, like when we cut, nobody said anything until it was all said and done. And I heard her going off in the bath. I'm like, ah, well, anyway, we fixed that. We got a new girl in. And then the day became so long that the other girl left. So the scene that we filmed, they had to just like do some patchwork to get it together. Um, mm-hmm. But I was just, I was just thankful to be there. I did not care. That was 21 hours on set. I had all of my lines memorized before I even showed up. And it was, yeah. I had one of the, one of the bigger roles. Uh, I was just so excited to be there um, that they had me back for three yeah. more the next year. Oh, wow. Amazing. And I was just a fill in. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, it just, it just, thing. it just shows your professionalism. Uh, like if they, well, one, if you stay there the entire time and you don't complain if things go wrong, I mean, that's, I mean, like, you know, you hope things don't go wrong, but how you handle each situation is going to, like, is going to be dictate, um, how people perceive, like, who you are as a person. So, yeah, everybody, check out those movies, you know, and yeah. you can see, you can see Miss Edge, you know, uh, doing, doing, doing her best. Yeah. You know, I think Vixens and... from Venus was my favorite shoot I've ever had in my entire life. And that Ooh. was the, the day that was everything was going crazy. You know, whenever there's so much chaos that you just find the humor in it. That was yeah. one of those days where it was so chaotic. And I'm like, really, this is happening. This is happening. And whatever. I just The way that I think about it is like, hey, at least I'm still getting paid like per hour. Like I'm, I'm chill. Like, you know, the longer it takes, the the more you're getting paid. So just like. Oh, mine wasn't per hour. Mine was mine was one set, and it was it was for a soft core. So I wasn't paid very much at all. I was brand new, hmm. but yeah, but that's okay. Well, the next the next see, year, I was paid more. From from what I've heard, is like they'll do the the day rate. For example, we'll say that the day rate's a thousand, and then once you go past, I think eight hours, they'll pay you time and a half. But I think that may only be in some cases. I'm guessing. Yeah, this was whenever I was newer, and it was just. Not, mm-hmm. I just looked yeah. it up. I think I've went across this one probably once or twice. I feel like I've heard of that. On HBO. Like, you know, just flipping the, flipping the stations late at night. I think mm-hmm. I've seen this one. Before. <laughs> I think I think this is one of the ones they would show like after you like Emmanuel or something like that. Have you seen that, your son? Have you seen this I think, one? I think because like I just looked on it and it has you, uh, Kate Morgan and yeah. stuff like that. And I know it was a time that on HBO, everything you saw at late night had her on it. Yeah. And, like, of course, you were going to see it. And I think I've come across this at one point playing on HBO. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I can't, I can't dictate. A, a one. I can't dictate. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched, um, what do they call it, Skinamax, um, you know, sometimes. Because sometimes, sometimes the storyline is really, really hilarious. Mm-hmm. Out of nowhere, and you sit back and you just enjoy it, and you don't think about um the sex scenes, mm-hmm. and sometimes it's like, yeah, it's it's just, it's just always interesting. I like I I'm looking at a screenshot um is of people like I think oh it's like a, a screenshot of everybody like in like a doctor's outfit, and I think I've seen that. That's huh, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like. I think yeah. I've seen it before at some point. Look at that. <laughs> That's right. That's a See, one. he's already seen it before he even knew it was you. No, oh, the HBOs are my favorite ones. They were just, it was so, I like dialogue. I love a lot of dialogue, especially whenever it's a scripted dialogue and I have time to study it beforehand. Mm. I can do some things with that. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this, and I've said this before in the podcast. Like I, the premise of this is probably the reason I watched it Be- because it's a mind exchange experiment which i kind of you know i love body swapping stuff like Mm -hmm. in general and so that premise is probably why i watched it and Mm -hmm. it it came out like almost 
uh, it came out a while ago. I'm not going to say how long because I'm not going to age anybody here, but it came out a while ago and that premise like is really uh, something that I would, that I would sit back and watch just because. Wait, let's say let's say when it came out. I'm not offended. What is it? 2016? Yes. 2016. Is it 16? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I I I'm just I try to make not sure. offended. I No, I didn't no. want to say yeah. This came out in 2016, and then all of a sudden you find me. It was like, look, raw. Next time, next time I'm in your presence, don't uh, don't do that. Like, no, 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 no. And Yeah. <laughs> I'm not I'll be sorry like, about my age. and then and then I'll be like, I'm sorry. And then all of a sudden, like, and then all of a sudden, I got two black eyes, and I mean, like. And 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 then I'm I'm laid out with two black eyes and it's a it's a it's a quilt like yeah quilt laying on me and I'm just laid out on the ground. What happened to him? Hey, Oh. <laughs> Nobody he knows. <laughs> he <laughs> he went to sleep. We'll never say my age again. <laughs> That's not the wrong person. <laughs> Then we ganged up on him. he went to sleep and he couldn't get up. Oh my goodness. No, I'm not shy about my age. That's fine. <laughs> No, I just always try to be respectful. The, the thing is, I'm I'm older than everybody here, so we all good, you know. That's 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 I'm I'm over forty, so we good, we good, and everybody else is younger, so we good. You have tremendous skin, though. You have great skin. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you. I guess I wouldn't have guessed. I feel I feel I feel this is getting getting all messed up now because you know the age is starting to droop on me. So. <laughs> What is it time for some Botox roster or what? Oh no, I have a, I have my skin my skin tightener in the uh in the spare room. It took me forever to find it because someone put stuff in random places and I had to find everything. So Wasn't I me. yeah, so I had to I had to, I had to, I had to find my skin tightening stuff and it's in the it's in the uh, spare in the spare bathroom. So I have three bathrooms. <laughs> so um. Okay, I'm trying to make sure I hit all my notes because I want to make sure that I hit everything. So, uh, I did want to talk about the hiking like what kind of hiking do you like to do like do you like more of like um hills or do you like flat uh flatlands um I'm not like a strenuous hiker by any means. Whenever I okay go hiking, it's just because I want to see the environment. I want to be a part of it. And I typically don't go on long hikes either. Like we have red rocks out here in Nevada. Um, have you guys been to those? Mm -hmm. I actually have, yeah, I've been there one time. Well, here I like to go and just kind of check it out. And then eventually I'll get bored and then just go back. Um, in Missouri, there's some trails too. There's some really nice trails out there in the woods and um, just kind of like going for nice walks is my Mm -hmm. Nice. extent of hiking. Yeah, I went one time to go see the sunset. It was so beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. It was a little like, not Not to be weird, but it was a little scary at night. You know, there's no lights or anything. I was like, because if I don't know the area, I'm like, oh, where am I going? Am I going the right way? Like, Yeah. I hope there's no, like, crazy turns. But overall, it was amazing. It was very beautiful. It can be pretty dark out there at night, so Yeah, yeah. it got super dark that night because um, I think it was, like, a crescent moon or something. So there wasn't a lot of, like, moonlight anyways. Right, So yeah. Like, oh. I know um near where I used to live at there was a hiking trail that had a waterfall, like a like a, a real outside waterfall. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't do it, you know, because like, no, that's never gonna happen. But I know a lot of people enjoy I I I can't hike. It's not Mm -hmm. no, like even before I got injured, you know, that that wasn't gonna happen. Cause like I I I fear falling. Like trying to go up, trying to trying to go up like mountains. Well, like cliffs and such, yeah. Yeah, that's like I commend y'all. That's that's a lot of work. That's I don't that's do anything hard. crazy like that. I, I don't like too much hill, you know? I mean, Yeah. like something a little more of a casual route. right. So Like you don't not, you don't you not don't do too casual like massage. much incline. I agree. Like I'm not in it for the athleticism of it. I'm just you know going for a, a nice walk <laughs> and checking things Exactly. out. So do you like do you camp also when you go hiking or do you just hike? Do I camp also? Me? Um, oh, it's been a while since I've gone camping, but I used to camp a lot. Like even in my own little backyard, I would camp. And we spent summers like three months away camping and I had an RV there for a while. I have not gone camping since 
maybe 2019 actually it's been a while yeah. i think i just i'm like a core memory i think she's gonna go camping now <laughs> i think so too ah, yeah. maybe 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 next summer you, I'll you can to. see it in her eyes like i need to go camping again it's been five <laughs> years yeah i need yep. i need to get back to nature <laughs> triggered into it yes <laughs> i just bought a house out in missouri just for the same reason i just miss i miss nature out here in nevada there's nature of course but it's all desert and rocks and dry and it's just not the same as water and trees and woods and such <laughs> See, i totally I, understand that. I, I like flatland whatever and the, the the mountains and stuff but for me it's like i like to be like be at least close to things Mm -hmm. And there was a point where I lived somewhere that it took like a good eight minutes to get down to see a lot of more humans outside of your neighbors. And yeah. I don't know, just because I think because I like the internet and the internet didn't always work. <laughs> and then you had to use Wi Fi calling. I'm like, what if the Wi Fi go out and I can't call anybody? And I'm just laying here, laying here in my car and I can't. So, yeah, that. That's how my brain, my messed up brain works. So you're not, you're not into camping then. <laughs> I'm not like I've gone camping, but it was more so like uh, oh, uh, controlled camping. It was like uh, we had these camping house, like it was a they call I don't know what they call them like the camping houses, uh, like a cabin uh, or cabin. There we go. Yeah. Jesus Christ! Okay. Oh, um, <laughs> had, like they had, we had cabins. So we weren't outside in a tent. So we weren't sleeping outside. Mm -hmm. And the only time I've ever been told to sleep in a tent was when I was in Africa. And they tried to throw us in a tent. And no, I, I couldn't do the tent they tried to put us in. It was like a teepee type tent and tent. And I'm like, oh my God. It was no, it was no in it was no indoor plumbing. It was it was a literal bucket outside. I'm like, the last time that I was at a tent camping, I was with um, my then boyfriend and we were, we set up the tent and we decided that we'd go down to the shower house, you know, we cleaned up before we went to sleep and such. Mm -hmm. And it was just us. There was nobody else in the, in the bathroom. So him and I snuck in and we weren't, we weren't getting frisky and we were literally just taking a shower and we were like in the uh -huh. same stall and then girls came in. And at first I was like, well, maybe I'm just going to the bathroom and leave. So we just kind of stood in the shower, but they just stayed and stayed and stayed. And I'm like, I have a guy in the girl's bathroom right now while girls are showering. And so we just kind of stood there and then eventually I'm like, we have to get out of here. So like I opened up the door and I'm like, sorry, girls, I don't want to like upset anybody. But before you guys came in here, I had a guy in here and we just want to sneak out if that's okay. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. They were cool about it. But oh, my heart was racing whenever we left. And he, he was like laughing, but that's mm -hmm. the last memory that I have of tent camping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's pretty awesome though because mind yeah. you of course everyone's just gonna automatically assume that y'all were doing a little frisky something something but like i don't know i just like showering with a partner you know like hey. it, it's intimacy there, there's intimacy in that and like i don't know there's some days where i just can't stop talking so we're just in the shower and i just continue the conversation like whatever we're talking about yeah. Think, well, for me, it was just it was nighttime and I was scared to be alone. So I made him come with me. <laughs> that makes sense, too. Honestly, like, like, what if there's a snake or whatever, like spiders and stuff? Like, it could be anything. You're right. Mm -hmm. Or, or they, or they could just be in there trying to listen to you. They wait, they stayed there for a long time. It was like, oh, they might have, didn't hear us come in. They were just waiting for the show. I think that we heard some things from them that we probably shouldn't have heard, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was, I felt kind of bad, but I'm like, we have to get out of here at some point. <laughs> oh, so, yeah. <laughs> now, now, now I'm intrigued at what you hear. No, no, like, well, I think it's, no. I think it's, well, it's not it's like bodily functions and stuff that we were oh. hearing. So it was kind of like, whoops, we probably shouldn't. Oh, yeah. You okay. know, it was just the longer we stayed, the deeper we were digging ourselves into the hole. <laughs> And so, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I've been to the head just back. We, could, we need to escape. So. <laughs> no, like, it's time to go. It's time to go before it gets yeah. any crazier. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I do, I do want to say that because we talked about it right before we got on, and you said you wanted to talk about it on here, about the entire, you know, Jane Doe, Preston. Oh. Go ahead. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us. the name tell change. The name change. A lot of people are like, oh, I've known you since before you were pristine. I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, oh, Jane Doe. And I'm like, mm, pristine was before that. <laughs> so um, 
No, what happened is, is, you know, I was working with an agency and I wanted to shoot for a company that was just up the hill from the the model house. And um, one of the, the members from the agency said, you know, they said that they're never going to put the name Pristine Edge on a box cover. Um, I've seen some crazier names and I don't think Pristine Edge is too crazy. You you don't forget it. Uh-huh. That's for sure. Um but I was like, well, I don't, I don't care what name they put on the box cover. Like they can call me Jane Doe for all I care. So I was just being a little bit of a smart ass. And then I went on a little hiatus. And whenever I came back, I thought, why not just be Jane Doe? Maybe that company will book me. This company never did book me, even under Jane Doe. It doesn't care what the name is. So um, anyway, I was now Jane Doe and not everybody was respecting the name change they would still put pristine edge on box covers or on titles and I'm like oh, forget it I'll just be pristine edge I didn't really mm-hmm. care about the name change I was just kind of being a smart ass because sometimes I have an attitude like that and so the attitude came out in there and um it, it was a price that I paid though because three of the HBO films are under Jane Doe whereas the Vixens from Venus is under pristine edge so it would have been nice to have those four under the same name um that's if, you, if you're depending on where you're talking about the debt, you can like it was on IMDb. You can make it say like as this name, or make it look as under that name also, though. Yeah, yeah, I figured uh, there were probably ways to do it. Yeah, you said mm-hmm. like just log on to it and you say this is blah 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 as this person, and they'll link your accounts together. Okay. Because I, I had to do mm-hmm. that. I had to do that like three days ago for somebody else because they don't use a certain name anymore. And I had to correct it. Oh, well, that was nice of you. I think I'll look into that. Thank you for that advice. Yeah. yeah it's it, it takes them like two, three days to change it, like, at least on IMDb. I don't know okay. how long it takes for uh, other, other places to do. But mm-hmm. you know what's crazy, though, uh, with what you said, though? Like, when I first started doing stuff in porn, um, I gave them a I gave them a name because I couldn't think of something, and I've been using the name Raw Star since I was sixteen. So when it came time to do stuff in porn, I didn't want to use the name Raw Star. I put the letter I said Mister, the letter X, the letter T, and the letter C down, and like that's what it is under. Like on this uh, thing I was doing the extra work for. And everybody found out my nickname was Raw Star, and they refused to call me the name I wrote down. Even mm-hmm. though I think, I think, even though I think the name I wrote down was so creative, and I'm oh. mad. Like I want someone to use it one day because it's a good name if you actually think about it. I'm curious if someone has used that name yet. No, not not the letter X, or letter T, letter C. Not not in that. Not with the initials form. or whatever. Say like that, that's think, what I'll call it. But, uh, Miss, Miss, Miss Edge, say say uh say what I just said, like say it out phonetically. I don't know. Can you say it? The letter X. X T C X to C. Oh, okay, okay. X. So like, that's why they were like, no, we can't no, use that. I, just, I, I just, see. I just needed. I just needed a name, and I didn't even pick up on that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I, I was like, I was sitting. We were sitting. In the, we were sitting in the room, and there were like. So again, everybody in here, uh, we need you to uh, sign this, like, you know, the whole paperwork ID process. And I'm like, yeah, you need to to give us a name. And I'm like, oh my God. I called my friend up, like, I need a name. And she said that. And I'm like, bet. And I wrote it Now somebody, someone's going to hear this and they're going to take that name. Watch. I want them to. I really, I really want somebody, hey, someone out there, you join porn, X, letter X, letter T, letter C together. There you go, ecstasy. And then when someone asks about your about how uh, you have sex with them and what you deliver, you deliver that ecstasy. Listen to you. I, That's clever. I feel, like, I feel like it can also be like a DJ or like a rapper's name. You know? uh, it's a good about. stage name all across the board, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like Especially if they kind of do multiple things, you know, because there are some musicians that also film or do whatever, you know, so like, you know, it can kind of carry well on both sides. So I have a, I have a question. I've been asking this question recently to our guests. What do you think is the funniest thing you think have hap- you has happened on any set that you've been on? 
Um, recently, I mean, there's several, there's several, but mm-hmm. the most recent one is I was doing a scene where it was kind of a cuckold thing. And, um, it's my husband and of course my, my stepson, my husband's watching. Um, and I guess it, in the scene, it hasn't dropped yet. Am I allowed to talk about this yet? I don't know. It hasn't dropped yet. Um, but like, I, mean, I think you my, can, as long as you don't say names, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I won't say names, but I'll give the premise. So the, the husband, it'll probably drop before you guys put this out, I bet. But um, the husband um, and I were supposed to, like, we wanted to get pregnant, right? And mm-hmm. he can't. He has been having a hard time with it. And so we decided that the stepson is going to step in because we need to have a family member, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, born. Anyway, so um, stepson and I are going at it. And the two of them are like arguing at each other. But it actually gets to the point to where I'm like, dude, the viewer is going to be really annoyed by this. <laughs> but hearing mm-hmm. the two of them arguing, because it's like, I'm trying to still keep it sexy, but also fill into the humor of it. And But the two of them just kept going and they both wanted to have the last word like in real life. So I scream. I'm like, can everybody just shut up? And I scream it. <laughs> and so now, I, and I was a little bit embarrassed about it, but I also was trying to play into the humor of it, but it didn't quite stop it. They still kept bickering. So we'll see when that comes out, how they handled that. But I think that's the funniest part so far that I've been in. I guess you'll have to see it to, to, to really enjoy the humor of it. But I totally get that though. Yeah. I, I, how can I say this and put it nicely? I think that, like, when it comes to stuff like that, like, you gotta remember, like, this is acting. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is not. This is not really your wife. This is not really your stepmother. You know, she she is a performer. She's acting. You know, yeah. and mm-hmm. it's because you get the last word doesn't mean like you get to go home with her. <laughs> Well, sometimes a funny banter in scenes can be good if it's done tactfully and tastefully. So like mm-hmm. one person says their part, the other person says their part, and then it stops. But if it's literally back and forth, and it's like, come on, you guys, nobody cares. They just want to see the fucking here. Right? So, <laughs> they just want to see everybody getting down. Um, I don't know, so anyway. Shut up and let me fuck. Yeah, I said, there were some crazy things said during that scene. I said some crazy things. And I, I mean, I can't even recall. I'm going to have to watch. I don't watch my own scenes, but I might have to at least watch part of it just to see what was why said because it was why crazy. Why don't you watch your own scenes? I can be kind of critical of myself, so it's better if I just don't watch it. So, yeah. Me I too. Can, I, can, I can understand that, you know. But, uh, oh my God. I do watch I was... my own content. Before I release my own content that I'm creating, I will watch that, though. Yeah, I think I think I think that's better you. because like one on one end it's your work and your masterpiece compared to someone else's vision and them capturing you. If that yeah. makes sense. Yes. So I And I need to know the product that I'm selling. I have to know what what's going yeah, on. Yeah, because you don't you don't you don't wanna uh record something and then have uh, a lifelong fan be like, What is this? You know, and you want to, you know, yeah, like, you know, you don't, you don't want to, like, you don't want to disappoint your fans. And, yeah. and the fact that she cares, fans out there of her, she cares about the work that she does for you. So that means, like, anytime you go to her, uh, her uh, places where you can buy her content, you can just say, hey, I love your work and I love the, the time and effort you put in. Here's an extra $400 just to thank you for such a great scene because I love you so much, you know? And then after that, you know, you can request more scenes from her because she appreciates you, you know? You know, and she's eager She's eager to, you know, do more for you because, you know, you took the time to say, I love you and gave, and gave, and gave her $400 and money on top to do another scene, you know? Yeah. Like that. When, whenever it comes to shooting these scenes, the content, I am such a perfectionist on my own content that there are actually scenes that I've shot. I paid the male talent, paid the the videographer, paid for the location. I paid everybody. Everybody got their like dip in the pie. Um, but then whenever it came down to it, I ended up scrapping it because it wasn't something that I felt like, do I really want to sell this? It's not quite up to par. So that's how much of a perfectionist I can be whenever it comes down to my own content. I mean, that's, that's the uh, best to be because like, like, I'm not saying names, but there's certain people who I've seen like, I often question, like, do they care about what they're putting out or are they just putting it out because it was recorded and um, they feel it's too late now 
and they don't care about uh, what the fans will or will not think about it. Or they might just say, oh, they might have just had a bad day. You know, but the fact that you uh, you care and you take the time out to say, I want this to be perfect rather than, ah, oh, okay, here you go, you know. Yeah, there was, you know, there was one that was a custom video, 20 minute boy girl custom video. And this person paid a substantial amount to have it exactly what he wanted it to be. Um, so I, I shot it at a nearby hotel. It was a gorgeous hotel, beautiful male talent. The director was there. I paid everybody. And then whenever I, it came out, I just was like this. I know that this can be better. I know we can do better. And so then I, I changed the location to one in LA and used the videographer that I like to use out in LA. Um, got a, the location that I like to use out there and use the same male talent. So we shot the exact same scene a second time. And I'm so thankful that I did it. The other one was scrap because it has names and like, you know, the, the customer wanted his name said and he wanted to be POV and, and I scrapped that entire thing and re paid for it again. I don't think that I really made a profit off of that one, which is totally fine. I don't mind. Um, he's been a long time fan who watches all my content. And so I wanted to make sure that he got exactly what he wanted. And I want to be proud of the work. So yeah, I'm pretty detail oriented when it comes to my videos. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So, thanks. so let me, well, that, 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 that brings me to my next question then. What uh, things do you, what, what things do you want to do within the next three years? Like what is your What is your vision and your goal to uh, opportunities or collaborations that you want to do in the next three years? Right. Um, well, right now I'm actually starting another venture that's out in Missouri. That's where I'm kind of at right now. That's where I'm all focused on. I've kind of, I've kind of pulled away a little bit from the industry. Um, maybe in June. June is kind of like my cutoff. I told my fans at one point, hey, I'm done with everything in June. But I've kind of backtracked on that a little bit to the point where I think I might just only be focusing on the pay sites that are going on. Um, and that way I can, I can do more of what I want to do. Sometimes I'm hired for scenes that I'm not really interested in doing. Um, oh, sorry, my Alexa is going off over there. <laughs> sorry. Um, where was I at? Um, sometimes I'm hired to do things that I'm not, like, I'm not really into that premise, but I can act it because I'm an actress. I can do whatever. I, I want to focus on more of the kind of content that I like to create. Because I want, I want the fans that like the same content as me to find me versus me catering to what everybody else wants. That's my goal. Okay. That's definitely understandable. And I feel like by doing that, you get to express more passion in your scenes because it's something that you're genuinely excited about. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Nice. I look, I look forward to what you produce i'm trying i'm trying to word this correctly what you produce in the, in the um before june because it seems like you have something going on that you don't want to say just yet and i feel mm -hmm. it's going to be big and i feel that your fans are going to love it and everybody's going to go oh, well, what i have going on what i have going on is actually just kind of a personal venture so oh. i got I have oh. talked about it and everybody tries to guess what it is, but nobody's gotten it. I just have um, a business that I've started out there and there's a few other things that I'm doing. Oh yeah. Um, we but it's, it's not adult. It's not adult. We're going to, we're going to, we're going we're gonna to keep that secret because it might dwell into your personal. So we're going to, we're going to, she's doing something big on her, um, for, for personal use and it's going to be fantastic. Yes. Yes. Just, just, <laughs> just know that. So that means I think means, everybody should have something for themselves that we all do. That's just for ourselves. Like, you know, quilting for the longest time, I didn't talk about it with anybody. I was kind of, it's just something that I love to do. And I didn't talk about it. And then eventually I started it. talking about it. Yeah. And it's just, it's a personal, it's like a personal, like love that I, it's just something I hold dear to myself. And so this adventure that I'm working on in Missouri, it's something that I hold dear to myself and we don't want anybody coming in to try and knock that down. So it's just something, something small, but something that means a lot to me. And yeah. if you, if you like, on a, on a side note, if we ever do start selling quilt, quilts again, I'll buy one. Oh, mm -hmm. thank no, you. Cause I, thank cause you. I, I, I love, I like, I have a few crocheted, uh, crocheted uh, uh, blankets, blankets um, in there that I either have, have received, whatever, and I have one, I think one, like, I gave it to my mother, um, one quilt that she keeps at her house. That is really, really good that I paid for. So I love, oh. I love, I love supporting people. Um, and then like, yeah, I love supporting people. So if you ever start start selling quilts again, I will buy one and say, yeah. I gotta, I gotta official, I got an official uh Miss Edge uh quilt, and I think I'm oh. good at it. 
Yeah. Oh, you guys you'll snuggle it. up next to it. Yeah. It's got all my love, blood, sweat, and tears in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, exactly. No, like, like, like it would be so meaningful to to receive a quote from you that that we know that you actually put your heart and soul into making it. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is though they they take a long time to make, and they are very expensive. The one of my bed cost me just in materials. 90 or sorry 900 dollars, and it took me 60 hours to create just to make it just to make it so they but it was a lot of pieces that's why they, yeah that's insanity but that yeah. definitely totally makes sense because like even if you don't end up using it as an actual blanket i've seen people use them as tapestries especially like in cabins and stuff like that it'll help like um it'll help warm up the room a little bit you know it's a cozy it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. like just just that word that's on your current couch right now, it bring it brings out everything around you, even mm -hmm. though it's just is this something so simple? But it's yeah, so, this was a very easy one to make. This one didn't take very long at all. Yeah, this but it's is so, a very fast one to make. It's so simple, but it's so it's so beautiful that it brings out everything around you. Like your mm -hmm. your whole aesthetic right now is just so perfect. Like the quilt. Uh, the 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 uh, sculpture I think above your head. I'm 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 I'm, in, I'm enjoying the flatrot like the uh the the scenery right now. This is oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's the little things I care about. I notice cinematography. Thank you. you know? well, yeah, I was <laughs> it's a very white house. It's very white, and I I rent this house. It's hard to make it into a home, but thank you for that's a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off. What you're saying? No, no, I was, I was just, I was just ad admiring your, uh, your vision for your room and for that room at least. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> great, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great visual. But, uh, you said so. Where can anybody, where, where can anybody find you to, uh, get your, get your content, get your work, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. You know, typically I use X formerly known as Twitter. I use that um, social media site the most. It has a link to my link tree that has, you know, all my pay sites on there and the other um, social medias that I have. And that, that handle for my, my ex formerly known as Twitter account is at pristine edge XXX. And that's where you'll find me and everything else is there. <laughs> you are the first person that has been on here that referred to it as X first and then uh, proceeded to say Twitter since we <laughs> since it, since it's changed. And well, we know I, how important name changes are, right? <laughs> yeah, like I, I still say Twitter. Like, yeah, I just call it Twitter still. <laughs> yeah, it still it's, comes out of my mouth too. I was just a little bit more mindful this time. More mindful, more demure. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, time out, time out. Hold up, before we go for it, I have no idea what that word means. Demure. Uh, yeah. Should I maybe, on? maybe feminine. <laughs> I almost want to say dainty and feminine and just classy. Maybe let's see if that's right. I actually don't know the the real definition. Okay, so the official definition is reserved, modest, and shy, typically used for women. Okay, that's okay. a word that's more used to describe women than men. I, he, I just I just I just hear I just hear the youngins say it, you know, the the young the youngsters say it and I'm like I'm I'm too old for these new words. I'm still <laughs> it started I'm, out as like a TikTok thing. I'm mm -hmm. still I still say one when I hang up. Yes. You know You say you know, one? Remember like back in the days, like like it's 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 a few songs where they hang up and they say one to hang up. I actually uh, have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I will, Star, you're aging yourself. I will, I will, I will, I will find a music video and they're literally on the phone. And he says, one, to hang up. Yeah. Maybe some of the viewers out there will know, but. Uh, it's a thing. It's a thing. I'm old. I'm old, but come on now. Like, <laughs> it's like, it's like some, it's some things you can't go, you can't, like, I still say it. Mm hmm. You know? I, I can't I can't help. I'm I'm pushing daisies. I'm almost there. Uh <laughs> where can I find you, Sarah? So you guys can find me on imsarahlease.com. All of my links and my social medias will be on there. Okay, you can find us at Third Burgess on Instagram, Burgess on Facebook and on um Twitter on X. Um I'm Raw Star on everything. Miss Edge, we really appreciate you. You are a joy, a pleasure. You're multi-talented, 
and everything that you do, you know, in the venture that you're doing, like outside of the industry, I wish you so much uh, luck on because I know just from having a conversation with you that you are very good at what you do. And I know it would be very, very successful. And um, even though you might, you know, step away a little bit, I'll be cheering you off from a distance, like, go, go, go. And just saying, I see you, whatever. Oh, and everybody out there on the internet, um, be kind. I'm just going to leave it like that. Be kind. But uh, yeah, so we will see you all next week. Uh, be well, stay blessed, uh, and uh, stay amazing. Thank you for having me.